Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. Cell411.com. That's getcell411.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. It's it's not it's not only the the the, the programming or or whatever they watch or how much they watch. It's it's the quality of what they watch too. I mean, if you're letting your kids watch SpongeBob for, you know, 4 hours a day, Hey man, they're not getting with, anything out of it. What's wrong with watching SpongeBob for four hours a day? You trying to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying okay, anything. No, don't judge ask. me, Jason. Don't judge me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 114th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back after taking a week off. I am Jeremy. I'm joined, as always, by Dave. What's up, Dave? What up? What up? What up? What up? Uh, Andre is 114. Not- yeah, man. Uh, Andre's got the night off this week again, uh, so Andre's not here. Uh, but in his place, we have our friend and uh, multiple time returning guest and slash uh, fill in host, Jason Booth. What's up, Jason? How you doing, man? What's up, Jeremy? What's up, Dave? How are you guys doing tonight? Good, good, good. Just wonderful. Just listening to the crickets. So <laughs> what we do down here in Alabama. Yeah, we listen to uh, we listen to gunshots here in California. <laughs> there's that down here too <laughs> oh man yeah well so uh you get uh, immune to it after a while you're just like eh. <laughs> well uh this this week we uh, are brought to you again by fiend phone and as always by room for freedom which there's still nothing there yet but there will be um so uh, as i mentioned before we took the week off last week that's because i wasn't here and andre also needed the week off Last week, I really needed the week off too. <laughs> oh, we could all use a week off every now and then, but I, I was gone because I was at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest out in Michigan, and it was a heck of a lot of a fun, heck of a lot of fun. And both of you should have been there. Um, you, you missed a good time. <laughs> uh, not not to rub it in or anything. Actually, no. Jason and I had this conversation already, and he said I'm allowed to rub it in because it's going to motivate him, right, Jason? That was the point. I, I'm supposed to rub it in that you weren't there. Yes, yes, yes. Post pictures, post videos. Tell me all about it. It'll motivate me to get there next year. Yeah, Maybe I won't be so broke that I will be be able to get there. I well, I'm you know, literally broke. The 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 only reason I was actually able to go is because I had already purchased the tickets for me and the kids in advance, and uh, I I bitcoined my way through most of it. Um, otherwise I would not have been able to because, you know, obviously <laughs> money's yeah. tight around here. So, um, but it was something I just, you know, for me, it was something I really wanted to do because I did it last year. It was a lot of fun and I was supposed to bring the kids last year. And then as I think we've discussed on here before, uh, probably around the la- last year when I went, uh, was that, you know, my one daughter broke her foot a month before and then the other one got sick a week, uh, the day of. So I went by, I went with just me and the dog, um, and uh, I, I really wanted them to come, so I, you know, having to stretch it a little, t- you know, a little tighter this this year was was okay with me because it was an experience I didn't want them to miss out on again. Because unfortunately, they only do that once a year, <laughs> and uh, it was great, man. It was 
it was it was a much different experience. I mean, I, I talked to Jason about this. I, I hopped on their their show that they do uh, Anarchy Among uh, Anarchy Among Friends mm-hmm. Roundtable uh, on Sunday night because well, I was ca- I was camping with one of their co-hosts, uh, Derricka Claus, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, so I hopped I hopped on with them for a little while, and I think I told this story, but yeah, it's, it it was a completely different experience, but almost a better one for me because, like I said, I was really looking forward to it, and it was just. After everything that's gone on with my with uh, my my ex and me and and just everything with my business and how how I've had to work my you know I couldn't really take a lot of vacations and just uh, you know yeah. with, with everything that's gone down this was the longest that my kids and I have been alone together away <laughs> on a trip yeah you know because we've done weekends we've done three or four day things but this was the longest time because we were gone for uh, over six days because we left. When did we leave? we left or we left Wednesday morning we hit the road mm-hmm. and drove down drove into Ohio and I to I stopped for the Monday. night to get a hotel room because they had never been in a car before for longer than seven hours yeah. so like six and a half seven hours so uh, I I thought pushing them past kids the, don't like that crap <laughs> well you know it's different than it was in well I mean I'm I'm older than both of you although not not that not not much by with Jason well, but. I, I, we didn't we didn't stop and get a hotel ever <laughs> well no yeah my, my dad would, only, would rarely get hotels but, but I was gonna say but even back then like we didn't have anything like you had to play like silly games in the car or stuff because this was pre um you know pre phone pre cell phones pre uh pre pre tablets pre uh, any handheld oh, devices man. even the freaking cell phones you know, have ruined us haven't they well yes and no but they, oh, they have <laughs> you know well listen as a parent having something that a kid you know whether it's that or whether it's one of the like the minivans with the little movie screens in the back of the seats and stuff like that um having that on long trips as a parent kind of nice man i gotta say i i can imagine seen this average screen time of the kids these like under 12 average i i listen i understand i understand that it's insane dude but well we used to we've talked we talked about this way back in the day with danilo when danilo is still part of the show because he was somebody you know him and i him and i discussed this a couple of times because i was on that oh the kid shouldn't have any screen time and he was kind of the one that like made me see that no no it's it's really you know I mean, sure. You don't want them to be. I don't think they should have all. You know, I I don't. I don't think they should have unrestricted access to the internet. That's that's my only thing. Especially smaller kids. You know, they could end up. It's it's it's, you know ruining money. No things things like cell phones and iPads and tablets and and portable video games and all that good stuff. They're a tool. They're 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 a tool to help parents out. I mean, they're not. They shouldn't be raising the kids, and the kids should not be constantly on them but giving one on on a freaking on an eight hour car trip here here's two or three just <laughs> don't yeah. kick the seat and don't scream for eight hours exactly <laughs> you know and and also not, it's, i'll take that yeah i mean yeah I, they're definitely they can definitely be tools in that respect but i i like like i was saying danilo kind of made me see the light on this because i hadn't really thought about it that hard uh before i started saying stuff about this a few years back was that you know especially in this day and age when there is so much information and the, one of the main reasons that school like government schooling is becoming like obsolete to a certain extent is because you can learn on these machines as well it's not just for playing yeah. games and having fun and even and even some of the, even a lot of the games are actually educational or uh you know how get give them some type of skill they can pick up on subconsciously yeah so they're not you know yeah i mean when 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 one of my daughters is like wants to watch you know if she has a day where she just wants to watch tv or something constantly yeah then i try to nudge her in different directions and try to give her other ideas of things to do say oh you know why don't we try this doing this first or try doing this instead and try to get her mind preoccupied because yeah i don't want them watching just like mindless tv for you know hours and hours and hours but you know ta- yeah because they're literally getting programmed i mean i know i did as a child yeah see, but and it takes a lot to break that programming i your, your your childhood was nothing like mine ne- neither was jason's like you guys are a, a, like a decade you know you're the generation a little bit before me yep. uh, uh, my generation was basically parents on checkout mode watching the computer or the tv and kids on checkout mode watching the you know the tv and that's it the getting programmed and we've now we're living in a whole nation of you know people have been had a few generations of tv programming in them you can tell man 
Yeah, the well. pe- especially the people that really stuck with hard. It's it's not it's not only the the the, the programming or or whatever they watch or how much they watch. It's it's the quality of what they watch too. I mean, if you're letting your kids watch SpongeBob for, you know, four hours a day, hey man, they're not getting with, anything out of it. What's wrong with watching SpongeBob for four hours a day? You trying to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying anything. No Don't bad. judge me, Jason. Don't judge me. I'm I'm not saying anything bad because I watch. Uh, I'll I'll roll up and then smoke. Uh, uh, smoke a little bit and then watch like Nick at Night and watch like Rugrats and Rocco's Modern Life uh, and Hey Arnold. So those yeah. those are those those are my cartoons. So. Yeah, I remember all of those. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I yeah I, I I agree. You know, to a certain extent, I agree with you guys. Like it's though you know I don't want them to be doing all that stuff. But and unfortunately, the, you know, they have the the Kindle Fires, which I never wanted them to have. Um, their grandparents bought them, bought them for my children, and you know, because I, like I said, I was I was against them having tablets of their own for a while, and then I then I saw how much they destroyed my ex's phone because she kept insisting on giving it to him, and they just keep beating the hell out of it, and she had to go through so many phones, <laughs> and they learned at a very early age not to touch daddy's phone because I was just like, this is daddy's property, we don't touch daddy's pro- this 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 part of daddy's property, this is off limits, <laughs> and they never touched it. Um, but so I was in somewhat happy that they have their own devices. Uh, but the, the, aren't they like the, the, apparently I'm just happy you're teaching them a healthy respect the property at that age, man. That's well, great. I, I tr- Instead well, of just, you well, know, the thing is, is my parents, it wasn't like that. It was like, hey, because it was, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, most of the time, because, you know, me, I'm the guy that's got to ask a thousand questions that hasn't changed. So <laughs> I was doing that as a kid. So eventually you get to say because, because. Yeah. Apparently, you know, when you're a parent, you just want kids to do things. You know, it's explaining the rationale behind it can get tiresome, I guess. Well, if you're asked the same question over and over again, it can be. But I, I to this point, I, I have yet to utter the phrase because I said so in anything other than just. Like I've said it jokingly a couple of times, but I, because I, me, I that was that was like one of those packs I made packs that I made with myself when they were first born. It's like I'm never, you know, when I got into the peaceful parenting, I'm like I'm never going to use that phrase because oh, I hated man. that phrase as a child. See, take times I've heard my parents say uh, that. Well, no, I, I, I heard it too. It's just I, I, because I, I've. I, well, and it's and it's always well. Whose house are you in? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I I talked with Danilo a couple weeks back. We recorded. Uh, and we talked about peaceful parenting and like, I, I so wish I knew about peaceful parenting when my kids were little. Um, I didn't, I didn't learn about it until they were like 13 or 14 years old. So I was the parent that would say, I said, because I said, so I would spank, I would yell, I would mm-hmm. threaten and do all that other crap that I feel really, really guilty You're an about. Evil spanker, Jason. Oh, I did worse than that. Um, Oh, my yeah. dad, he used to, he, he had a, he got new uh, hardwood in the house and he had a few pieces of hardwood left. He got on his uh, Dremel there and he Dremeled a handle into one end of the <laughs> hardwood. And uh, yeah, that happened when I was about 10. Yeah. And my, buddy, that, that thing was, he called it Mr. Friend. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom, my mom had a, a, a hairbrush. The, the handle was solid wood. And I swear to this day. That it was carved from a two by four. This thing was like <laughs> this thing was like six inches long and like four inches four inches wide, and and it had to weigh a solid pound. Yeah, and that, you're you're only getting whipped with that thing once or twice. <laughs> oh no no, my mom was fast. She would get three or four. Oh well, what I'm saying is is the uh, the, the 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 you know how many times you get whipped by it before you learn. Oh no, I had I had three little brothers. I was in charge. I would get in trouble for them. Oh, see, I'm the oldest as well. So I know what you're talking about. It's like, why didn't you stop your brother from doing this? It's like, I, <laughs> I don't, I, see, he's not like a robot that I control. <laughs> like, see, I never, <laughs> may, may, see, maybe, maybe it's because I had sisters. I don't know. I never got in trouble for that. I, I was the oldest too, but I, it, it my, it, my actions, because I was what I, because I was older, because what I did it negatively in, in, impacted my sisters, not me. They got harsher punishments. <laughs> they got earlier curfews. <laughs> they got all sorts of stuff because they're like, we're not going through this again. We let him. We let him run a little wild. 
and he went crazy. So, you know, but yeah. it was, it was, I never got, I don't think I, I can't ever recall getting punished in any way, shape or form for what they did for not for be, trying to be responsible, not being responsible for them. Luck, I guess, luckily, Oh man, but you know, yeah. not that oh. my parents were peaceful. I think I've gotten a, I like, I think belt. all of, all of me and my brothers have all been whipped for four one of the other messing something up. Yeah, just a general like somebody should have stopped this. All of you should have. <laughs> no, my 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 mom's line or my dad's line was, uh, and I quote, "You should have known better." Like I I would get in trouble for what they did because I should have known better and stopped them. Well, yeah, and it, and it's like, <laughs> what? Okay, so I'm supposed to just essentially be dad and whoop all of my brothers. If they don't do what dad would want them to do, like that's not going to last long. No, it, it didn't. Well, of course. It doesn't last long at all. Because that, oh. that stuff only works until, you know, the other party can start hitting back. You know, that's when I, you know, just like with my, just like with uh, the but that starts that whole collectivist, uh, you know, blind, you know, do what I say because. Well, that's, yeah. That's how it starts. Of course. And that's, that's the might, it's the, it's the, the, the might makes right mentality. The might, yeah, you're right. It's the might make right. It's it's this whole thing where let's throw morality to the wind and let's just might as well just all gangs of New York it and until the last man standing or everyone capitulates to the last man standing. Well, kind of, but yeah, it's it's well, I I was just it's it's where you know it's been said before, but it's where it's where you know I I really believe the whole notion of statism gets its start. You know, it's it's oh, reinforced I'm, that the you know state, statism statism starts at home. It's reinforced, un in a lot in most instances un, unwittingly by the parents. They don't you know they're just they're just repeating the mistakes that they were put through. You know they don't you know they mm -hmm. don't they, you know the ignor it's ignorance not malice in most cases. I mean, well, it's turtles down the line for sure. Ab ab absolutely, I mean we're told, like we're we're told from from as soon as we we can walk and talk and and move. We're told to sit down, shut up, and be quiet, right? We're we're told we're told to our, our because our parents said so. We're told listen to the teacher. We're told listen to the principal. We're told listen listen to this person, listen to that person, and and to we're taught to shut up and obey whatever authority figure happens to be you know in, in our presence. There there is an inherent authority behind you know self-ownership behind owning your body owning your property all of this that has to be taught to children and res as, as a respect thing it doesn't not one person has to beat the crap out of their child with a hose pipe or whatever because of anger that that, that all that says is hey when i get this age i can do this and it's going to be a rational decision nope no it's not <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ab that, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, go going back to uh, a meme that Jeremy made a while back, we're all born anarchists, right? And indoctrination has to be taught, right? Uh, respect for authority has to be taught. Well, the respect for self ownership, the respect for property rights, and and for the non aggression principle, and mm -hmm. for uh, um, uh, all these count count counter economics. Are a and, You're right. And counter economics and all that. I mean, we're we're born and we know almost nothing. So it's just as easy to teach us uh, self ownership and, and the nap and all that as it is to teach us indoctrination. No. Well, oh. yeah, these are abstracts that get forced into your brain. You know, these that that by by either just monkey see monkey do or you know by plan, and you, it's fish in the water just like uh people once you kind of step into this hey i kind of want to live in a voluntary society kind of thing that's all you can really see that's all you see the world for you're like i i'm i'm already done with this status crap uh what are you why are you guys still throwing you know your monkey crap at each other <laughs> yeah uh I, well the one thing i was gonna say i I don't, I, you know, you said it's just as easy to teach them one versus the other. I, I don't know. I don't know necessarily about that because it is, I'm sure it's actually easier to teach them the indoctrination method um, because you don't have to take the time to try to reason with them. You can just, okay, yeah, for, I'll, you I'll, can give just you, I'll give you the you point can, on that. Yeah, you just you, keep hitting until they stop. Well, yeah, complaining. you force the issue until you win and you'll almost always win, especially the younger they are, you know, the more, the bigger you are over them and that, that whole deal. 
but but it's because it's not it's not it's not exactly the easy route to try to be peaceful with your kids you know like i i I, i'm far from perfect i've definitely yelled a bunch of times i still haven't hit them (laughs) um uh you know i'm not saying that some kids don't need hit i'm not i'm not even saying that let's say you got a 12 year old kid he walks up and punches you in the face I'm saying you could rack one off on him and say, uh, "Look, well, this is what's going to happen to you in the real world." Okay, but I yeah, but I, but okay. Well, that's 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 a matter of complete subjectivity because I I'm all for proportionality. Um, so I don't think you got to you don't got to you don't got to slug him um, to prove to, to make your <laughs> well, point. Well, of in that course, situation. I'm not saying like break his. You know, well, no, but I mean like it punches you in the nose, like hit him. Like I don't think you have to just. I don't oh, think he's getting to, his guts racked, is what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you have to go that far off in order to, to in order to prove that. Or, point. or you know, I'm saying you got to teach someone. Hey, if you hit somebody, they're going to hit you back. Well, okay, right? no, well, yeah, but there's different ways to do that. Like I've done that with. Uh, you know, I, I had to, I think I've told this story. I, I had to do that with my daughters because my one daughter is, you know, prone to fits of, uh, fits of anger. Cause she gets frustrated easily, um, because mm-hmm. of her limitations because of her CP. So she, and she recognizes it and she's recognized that she's had limitations since she was relatively young. Um, even though everybody at the time told me that I was crazy and that she couldn't possibly recognize the things that I was, I was seeing her recognize. Like I was, follow like i i saw right. things happening and people like people kept telling me i was nuts and i'm like no this this kid is more a lot more perceptive than you want to give her credit for and uh you know sure enough she has but so she gets frustrated and when she was very little before she before she was verbal she used to take you know as a lot of kids do even when they're raised peacefully when they're kids when they can't speak they they get frustrated very easily because they can't get what they want a lot of the times right away because it takes time to understand what they're trying to point at or or motion to or whatever or do whatever um, signs you've taught them in order to, like it takes time to do that so they get frustrated mm-hmm. they get mad and a, a lot of times they'll have little temper tantrums well her temper tantrums turned into bigger ones where she would lash out and try to hit her sister and. She, um, you know, her sister would never hit her back. So that's when I had to teach her. I had to teach the one of them about self-defense just to protect her from her own sister. <laughs> um, well, that's good. I mean, this, this, you know, I was never taught as a child, you know, if, if somebody fights you, you fight them back. That's what I was taught. Well, yeah, I was child. taught. Yeah, I was, I was raised, raised but, Catholic and told, taught that, you know, turn the other cheek bullshit. You know, run or well, or, no, I mean, or, or or not even like not even just turn it run turn. Well, turn even the in cheek. school, they tell you if someone hits you, don't like run away, defend yourself, and like run. go find a yeah, exactly. administrator. Well, that's what I was gonna that's say. A, that's what that's what I was gonna it's say. BS. But it I was sh- it should I, be like I was taught. That's what I was because I was raised. I think in this is in part because I was raised by two public school uh, teachers. Um, mm-hmm. I that's how I was taught at a younger age. Like when I got older, my dad was trying to teach me about defending myself. But at a younger age, it was no, you run away and you run to the authority figure and let them handle it. You don't take care of yourself. Uh, You're not responsible right. for was, yourself. I, I, I was I was raised with uh, never hit first, but make sure you always hit last. <laughs> well, you were, you're from California, so that makes sense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Like so that. you you saw a cool article uh, that oh, you wanted yeah. to talk about, Jason? It blew my mind when you mentioned it before the show. And in case you missed um, it, folks, there's the one of Dave's world famous ham fisted segues. Um, that's a, that's a segue, <laughs> folks. That's a Dave way right We're there. Talking about kids was, and all this stuff, and Dave just bam. There you go. We're not talking about that. That was anymore. that was a, that was a really hard really hard shift right there. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I came across this yesterday, and. Um, I, I laughed. I like. I, I I laughed at first, and I read into it a little bit more. And, you thought it was uh, fake news. <laughs> I did. I honestly thought it was fake news, but uh, it's not. <laughs> it comes from uh, <laughs> not uh, fake news. From, from this. Uh, hold on. Read it slow. This is okay. not fake news, folks. Read it slow. This is from uh, Slaughter, Louisiana. <sighs> All right. I like it already. It's, uh, okay. <laughs> The police department, the police department in the town of Slaughter is in turmoil tonight after the chief and the majority of his department called it quits. Uh, all of this follows stories by the investigative unit that showed Slaughter Mayor Robert Jackson had a quota system where he wanted police officers to write 40 tickets per month. Officers said they would not enforce it. 
Chief Walter Smith said, said once almost everyone walked out, he decided it was time to leave too. With the mass ex with the mass exodus of almost everyone in his department, he said it was too hard to do his job. Um, everyone, everyone I had working here when you talked to me last two months ago is no longer here. So the police, the police department now has eight units that sit parked. Uh, there's almost nothing uh, in the way of police being done, and uh, there, the the whole, the whole thing, the the mayor's speech to the the chief and the police department uh, was all caught on video. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I might want to contact that guy to have him on the show because that's the kind of shit we need to see. Yes, I I was absolutely astonished. That is uh, what we need to see. Guys going, this is horse shit. I'm not robbing my friends and families. Fuck you. Well, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, in this one instant, sure, that's great. I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see their politics behind some other stuff first. Like, yeah. you know, for all for all we know, they could be they could be awesome on this and then still be pro drug war. So, you know. <laughs> now this this is um yeah. <laughs> this 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 was this was the uh, the money shot for me right here. This is a a quote from the mayor. Um, quote: You need some extra money? Go pick up three or four people. You can write your own check. We get paid, and you can pay. You get paid. You can't say it ain't fair. What? That's what the mayor was saying to the the chief. That's what that's what the mayor told the police and the chief. Wow. See. Wow. <laughs> Yes. I'm I that's well you know what get a uh they get a good good attaboy for the day. That's uh you know, at the very least that's an honest politician. <laughs> yeah, at you the know, very least he I, is the, I, the I, mask I, is off with that guy. Yeah, he don't like, give a shit. At the very least, I usually have to at least get give these guys credit if they're <laughs> Hey, you know, look, you guys rob them, we get money, you get money, you shut up. I yeah. don't get the problem here. <laughs> What's the deal? We're when, the state. It's it's the ones that try to sweet talk it and try to you know try to yeah. blow smoke up everybody's ass that are even that are even more despicable. At least this guy, you know, you got to give him a little bit of credit. At least he's out front with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this article, Jason. The article needs to go viral. More well, officers yeah, need there, to go. This there, is ridiculous. There have been other there have been other uh, police departments across the country in the past couple of years now that I remember. Um, that have shut themselves down for different reasons like this, like uh, protesting uh, what they consider to be insane laws that they is expect to enforce. Um, I think there was, yeah, there was one last early last year, late the year before. I'm trying to remember somewhere out in the west. Um, there was a gun. There was a gun one in uh, Nevada, and uh, like uh, there's twenty something, maybe. T- 30 sheriffs. I can't remember how many counties in uh, Nevada, but <clears throat> like 80% of the sheriffs like basically went to the mayor's or the, the, the governor's uh, mansion or whatever, you know, their headquarters. And like, we're about to arrest you if you don't cancel this. <laughs> and there's no one that can stop us. <laughs> yeah. So. But I'm, I'm more for the ones that, you know, are willing to walk off the job versus arrest. Cause you know, then they're just perpetuating the BS just heck. Just, yeah. walk, just walk out. This is you know, or just Ron Swanson and the whole thing taking a sheriff's job or whatever, and just saying I'm not doing fuck all. I mean, yeah, that's 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 where that's where the article lost me is, is the chief. The chief walked away. He he signed his resignation, and whatnot, but he's staying on till like July fifteenth, and he's hoping to hire more officers. Well, so it 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 kind of it kind of cancels out the whole point of <laughs> oh so everything. he's gonna rehire people that are will enforce it and all the good guys left perfect yep perfect slaughter louisiana is yep. gonna be a great town to live in now see yeah. right now slaughter would be a slaughter would be a great town for a whole bunch of anarchists to move into and <laughs> talk, talk about Go a, move into and then uh, say we don't want no police <laughs> no no you could even offer you have to, to say that down there well you could offer to open up uh you know a threat management my, my friend did some math he he did some math just on his town and he said that if even if uh, if if, if even 50 percent of his town got on to if all the police quit and started a private security for uh, a force only uh securing people's property from theft and you know murder assault you know all this 
uh, and charge 50 bucks a month for like a Netflix subscription, every one of those officers in his town would be making $180,000 a piece. And that's only if half the town subscribed. Well, um, and that's only if they kept the same amount of police they had and everything he did. He did all of it. He said, they're only making like 30 something. Now they'd be making 180. Well, if, if they, <laughs> if they were getting paid directly, I think is he, is he, yeah, if they were a, getting paid directly yeah, subscription fee, but, yeah, but, but if, they, if but they're he, furnishing all this stuff, if the city already owns all the stuff, then the private company could buy the stuff from the city. I mean, it's, so they're not actually making, cars, so they're not facility, actually, all of it. So they're not actually making that because a lot of that money is going to have to go into purchasing that stuff. Okay, initially, they're going to be and, and, and vastly take, more than that. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure they than they are. Well, yes and no because I mean, for instance, you know, I I live in I, I live here in Nassau County in New York, which I believe I haven't checked the stats the past two years, but I believe for there's yeah, a keep lo- in mind Alabama's broke, like I there's am, no pensions. Uh, broke okay new, new york new york's insane it like new york's budget is just ridiculous um it's it's i mean it's all smoke and mirrors but even if you take it on this face i, I get this the, okay well but, with the cop well, job on, and pension I, and all this yeah right. but i'm saying like here the the two counties that are the two counties that are next to each other here on long island have long been the highest paid police in the country because it's a uh, one like, and it happens. A lot of the city cops do the city beat, where they get paid thirty five, forty thousand, whatever. Um, but they and once I think they have to do at least seven years, and if they can manage to get out here, or they once they get transferred out here, it's a quick. Uh, I think five just between five and seven years, and you're making upwards of one hundred and twenty grand, um, just as a regular cop. Well, you're think, um, just to think do about nothing, how much more money <laughs> to do because there's no crime more- per se. Um, but uh, but yeah, but you uh, but you could get more money, but it, there would also be less need because you know in a free society there's a lot less laws that they're actually enforcing. Well, think so, about how much more happy you're going to see to see a security company that you're paying a subscription to and have a contract with versus how you would feel, you know, even when you glance at the cop and you're not a no, relative I, of a cop. I, I, I would know? be, I, of course, I, I would be, there would be a much more positive interaction. I'm just saying that we, while, yes, it would be, it'd be definitely and then, and possible. Then those, the, so the argument would be, hey, police officers, you could have a much better uh, relationship with your friends, community, and families, and you could also be making more if all of you would just quit your jobs, do this, basically open up the same thing, but actually protecting people and charging your town a subscription fee. That simple. Yeah, we've privatized first, the police. That simply. First, you got to get them over their uh, blind allegiance to the government. Well, they're they're not going to have this 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 fake authority that they they think they have. They're going to have to respect other people's properties, and they're only going to be able to work and operate within the bounds of the contracts. Well, yeah, but that—that's part of that. They have to—they have to—they have to get in that. And mindset. that's going to be a retraining thing. Well, I mean, it, 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 I'm not saying it's not—it's not possible because I mean, heck, during my <laughs> recent experience, if you can make this work at a small city, is what I'm saying, then you could. If, well, then you could try to you you know. Well, that's what I'm standardize it and blow it up. That's why I said something like this town slaughter, Louisiana is a perfect opportunity for somebody to swoop in right now and offer to start something like, you know, what Dale Brown's doing in Detroit with threat management or, or something along those lines. Like this is the time that you do that and you present because what it, what is, you know, the, the, the best way to, to overcome the, the, you know, attachment There's to government. There's already an app that these guys could use to to co- configure. They don't even have to make any uh, software or anything. You could just use Cell 411 and have every. Well, Cell 411 could definitely come in very handy for an organization like that. But yeah, yeah, like I said, it's just it's a matter of getting in there and getting started because this is what you do. This is how you show people. You know what? What do you what do you do? You you don't try to you know you don't try to smash you know smashing the state's a heck of a lot of work. Trying to do revol you know trying to get into I'll a compete. revolution um, usually never bodes well. But what do you do? You provide services that that may you know that show that the state can become obsolete in these areas. Uh, so you you know you bring competition when normally there is no opportunity for competition in these places because there already is a monopoly on you know there's already a monopoly on this service. Well, here you go. Oh, there's the ice cream man. Hi, ice cream man. You either have to find the thing that can absolutely crush the monopoly to where the even the state can't stop it. You know, it's like oh, 
it's, it's not like even cru- email you don't even have to crush you know it. like email like they couldn't stop email they were just like well yeah, we got to deal with email but you don't but to start out you don't have to crush it you know like like we're saying in this little town or you have to set up to where it's it completely makes that that faction See, or that the way it works obsolete well yeah eventually yes but i think the the you know the most important hurdle to get over is just the start and just to, I mean, when it, an entire neighborhood is mic'd, cameraed, and wired in a private, ca- you know, no, I, city. I, I, I still don't think a lot of people are going to want to go for that, though. Um, but I, I don't mind it as long as I know who's going to see it. Yeah. It's when the state or uh, some ambiguous, you know, agency can look through it, then it's a different thing. But you know, if it's like, you know, the private cities, well, these whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, I'm just saying, in 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 the current situ in the, in the current was staying within the current paradigm and just offering this to show people what can be done because that's really what it's about. Is just it can be done. You don't have you, you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to overwhelm it and say oh you know the, now now we these things aren't needed at all. It's just a lot of people really just need to be shown that it can be done. Not even it oh. doesn't even have to be successful for like they don't have to see it you know happen for like ten straight years and see it grow and all this stuff. A lot of people. Just to get over, because I'm one of those people. Um, Because I was actually, when we started talking about this, I was going to mention it. uh, You can build on it. It was, I guess it was last week. uh, It was last week when uh, Tom Woods was off for the week, but he had a bunch of recorded stuff. And two of the shows he did was was talking with Robert Murphy about both parts of the uh, the two essays that he wrote way back when in grad school, which became the little pamphlet called uh, Chaos Theory, which is originally what got me over my hump because the last you know the last thing i was stuck on on my way to uh, uh pure libertarianism and anarchism was uh was what you call it was the national defense and reading his his argument for private defense was what sent me over the edge and it wasn't that he gave me the answer he just showed me that it was possible that yeah. here here's an actual laid out plan it's like whoa it's not, I've this seen that just, with a lot of people when yeah, you're like, hey, the state shouldn't do this. They're like, well, then what's your solution? It's like, I don't know. Like, can you not think of something simply real quick to figure it out? Contracts. We do it with contracts. Well, who's going to enforce the contracts? I don't know. An arbitrations company that we yeah. both agree upon to issue the contract through. Uh, it same, sim- it's very simple. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what it really comes down to is just, you know, planting seeds, you know. Uh, you you start out you start out small. I mean, if you were to do like a, a private security firm or or whatever else, you start with with one neighborhood, or you start with you don't even start with one neighborhood. You start with one street, and then the people on the next street. I mean, you can show them data. Hey, look, no crimes happening while these contractors were were protecting this neighborhood. Well, then the people on the next street are like, oh, well, we had four break-ins. Uh, let's you know try this company. And then, and then it, it expands from there. You don't have to come in and, and crush the competition. You don't have to come in and, and completely you know, shatter the, the government monopoly, as you said. All you have to do is show people that it's possible. Yeah, um, and it'll go away. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Philo- I mean you, you, can, you can philosophically explain it to someone you know, for 100 hours, and they're, and they're not necessarily going to get it. But mm-hmm. you show an example. Right. I mean, you, you have like actual statistical proof that says, hey, this not only is possible, but it works uh, and it can get better. I mean, this is this is, you know, version 1.0 or whatever. It's like uh, uh, I grow microgreens. I could sit here and tell you how to grow microgreens, Jason. Yes. And you wouldn't get it right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> most likely. Like mm-hmm. most people wouldn't. But it's but if I sit down and showed you somehow, you could just sit there and do it all day, every day. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I, I love the idea of of private security or private privatize privatization of anything. Um, but I also love the idea of like an enhanced uh, neighborhood watch programs or or mu- mutual assistance groups is is what I was uh, what I learned to call them. Um, you get a, a neighborhood watch program. You get people protecting their own. Yeah, and that inspires others to to do it also. And pretty soon, the police have nothing to do. Yeah, yeah Japan. They're having to actually change a bunch of laws and like make the infraction. Like 
in certain parts of Japan, the crime is so low that like they're having no reason to have the police there. Good. So they're having to make new laws and shift and adjust laws so that they can actually write tickets and stuff. <laughs> it's funny. No, no, like no, the, no. instead of doing the rational thing and firing these, you know, well, yeah, people, lay some people off, you know, and the uh, monopoly gets to do whatever the hell it wants because it's got to keep going. That guy's got a pension and a wife and kids. What are you going to just kick him out on his out on the street? Yeah, well, it's so stupid. Yeah, well, yeah, because that's that's a horrible argument. I hate luddite arguments. Is all it just makes me want to break someone's teeth in all the way back to the back of their throat until their throat breaks. Wow, just boom. <laughs> no, this is my least favorite argument. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna try sophistry, at least try it a little bit better than that. Well, all right then. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Well, you, you mentioned that I t- talked about a story last night on the radio about uh, with something going on in Taiwan where it was where you know the systems are horrible, but you know when you have individual people that are cool, like you watch uh, you watch some. Uh, there was a cop who talked a knife wielding guy and down um, just by talked him down um, with his body language and stuff, and then ended up giving him a hug and then making sure he didn't get arrested for the whole thing because the guy was just upset. <laughs> um, yeah but yeah so there's people out there like that and you know that's the type of thing that uh you know i mentioned before dale brown like that's his whole thing with the you know the peaceful interactions and and not and trying to de purposely trying to de-escalate like this stuff happens right now and there's examples of it to point to you know if, if you give people that opportunity and that's why i said like this one town in particular or any town that's having issues with its police department that's the best time to get in there. You know, that's why Dale Brown was as successful as he was because he started in Detroit where things were hor- <laughs> things were horrible for very, very they long have to before. to turn street lights off on like, like 90% of the city. Well, yeah, but that, yeah, but he's been there since before it collapsed because he was, he was been there 20 plus years doing this thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but he went to an area where the cops weren't going, not because like the situations you're talking about in Japan, where nobody, where there was no crime happening. There was no, so, so much crime happening. Yeah. They just said, "Nope, done." You know, the same things happen in different areas in New York City. Most like people don't understand that these socialized monopolies have like a gate of being able to handle stuff. Uh, it's almost like the bell curve there. Like if you're on one side of this, like, like look, just for crime, like if it's too insane and it's too rampant, they just basically give up. And if it's there's nothing going on, then they have to make stuff to get it back up into that middle of the bell curve, or or, or else their use they have no use, and so they got to go bye bye. So either the the crime is too bad and they got to keep always getting money, 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 money. Our our our, our monopoly is always failing. We need more cash. Or they've got to make up new rules to fund their monopoly because, you know, otherwise the people won't need it. I mean, they're still giving subsidies to people to make Korean War uniforms, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's there's plenty of those crazy things, but yeah. That's, I could go all day on it. Yeah, I know. But that's, it's ridiculous. That's, that's, and until people go, holy crap, this is ridiculous. But that's a whole separate issue than the, the policing that we're talking about. <laughs> well, it's the same way with the policing. Like, no matter how bad the 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 uh, the the nap breakage or whatever, the property damage that's going on, the the people you're paying to protect your property shouldn't say, "Well, there's too much. We give up." That doesn't work. You take them to court and sue them. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're not fulfilling their end of the contract. So well, then we're forced to f- pay for something that they can't fulfill. It's ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous, but it's it's the it's likely one of the only ways that's going to make people see, you know, because again, a lot of people, even if they're fe- a lot of people, even if they're fed up with the police, even if they're they're you know, even if they see a lot of the problems and and they're 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 angry about it, they are apathetic to the because it's more of the well, it is the only game in town. It's the only option. We can't do anything else. So that's why there has to be more people out there showing them that, no, no, it can be done. Look, we can do it here right now, right here, right now. We could pull this off and we could show Even you. Even if it wasn't a hundred and like that vast of an increase in payment and, and there could be a, a Netflix subscription model for security, security come out. I guarantee you that these, that the, the, uh, the 
security officers that work for those firms that are doing that would be making more than pl- than public police officers. Well, Guarantee it. Again, it's, if if they're because a, a lot of the places, a lot of the places, their salaries are inflated at the current at the current moment because it's quote unquote free money to them. They don't give a flying oh, fuck. Yeah. It just comes in. Uh, oh, I know. It's it's all crap. so. It's I don't I don't think you can really I don't think you can really make. Uh, that much of an absolute determination on on what would transpire because uh, you know as uh, the the fact that when it comes to government and I- even so far as how the how the employees are paid there's no they're, 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 the market's not really involved there. They've they've destroyed the price mechanism, so they're just paying yeah. on whatever. So there's you can't it, it's kind of I mean yeah I'm sure you could get a ballpark figure, but like I said. If they still had to put in the same amount of hours and they were still enforcing the same amount of laws, then yes, I could see it almost definitely being an increase in payment. But you're not only talking about if they're if they're paying if them they're more grabbing, directly. If, yeah, if you're yeah, if you're getting rid of the bureaucracy, I'm talking about them just securing property, just you know, I, I, essentially. Yeah, I, well, exactly. If somebody that, you could call if you were being aggressed upon. Yeah, but exactly. That means it's less work. So there doesn't. So the job's going to be in higher demand because there's not going to be as many of them because there's not going to be a need for as many of them because they don't yeah. need to enforce all these other bullshit laws and regulations. Then they don't have to be there, and the ones that do there could probably be paid very well because it'll be a high demand job. So people, Alabama you know, is a stand your ground state, and as far as I know, another person can help another person stand their ground. So I don't know why I. Uh, Two or three of the toughest dudes in town haven't haven't started doing what I'm talking about. It's charging neighborhood a subscription fee. <laughs> hey, we'll protect you because we'll most here people hear that the the way you just <laughs> described it. There, two or three of the most of the, of the toughest guys. Yeah, most people hear that and think the mafia, Dave. That's probably why. I get um, <laughs> that, but it's a, it's like, hey, you don't have to pay, and we're not going to beat you up if you don't pay. We just aren't coming if you don't. <laughs> we're not coming you if you're getting beat up or stolen from or whatever. Yes, I, I understand. But yeah, so well, like I said, that's what you got to do. You got to introduce people to this stuff, man. So yeah, get on it, Dave. Yep. You want to? We're see- trying to, man. It's I think once everything goes like because it makes so much sense to people now. The subscription stuff. This, uh, you know, pick it up for a while, use it, and then put it down. This makes a lot of sense to people now, especially the way mm-hmm. Amazon Prime has tra- tra- uh, you know kind of started training society and everything i could start seeing state services being sold off by and large and put into subscription based stuff for the people who really want it uh because not everyone wants state services you know everyone's like well we all need roads it's like well there are people that literally need never leave their property ever so not everyone wants roads so well, not, not only not only things like roads, but like um, uh, public transit, such as subway systems, uh, or here we have BART, Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah, um, buses. Yeah, and 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 subway trains and and whatever else. If if you could privatize that, I mean, you you already you honestly already do pay a subscription service when you purchase your ticket. Yeah. Right. So if if you just took that out of the government's hands and and had a private do you know how much more people would use bar if it system. was a subscription fee yes uh it we have we have a, a subscription fee for the for the bridges around here uh you you can you can pull up to the booth and and pay your five bucks or you can um get what's called a fast pass yeah and and it's like it's like 40 bucks and you get unlimited use of use of the bridges uh, all of them except the Golden Gate, which is a, a privately owned bridge. And yeah, if you could do that with with a subway system or a bus system, instead of having to pay every time you got to use it or having to pay toll roads and, and things like that, it would it would vastly improve not only the transportation, um, but it would prove the service because you have I mean, it in the hand you have it in the hands of a, of a private company as opposed to a, a government entity i had netflix which, for uh, nine years i think or i can't remember how long but it was a long time I, I canceled it a little bit a while ago uh and i think there was probably two years i didn't even watch it like i forgot i had it just didn't even just forgot about it getting pulled out of my bank and everything just was like oh netflix i'll watch that sometime so People telling me that this model doesn't work is they're they, they're crazy. 
It absolutely does work. It's it's already it's already halfway there. Right. So with, all with we got to do is start finding a way to get state services that people are demanding. Like me and Jeremy had a little bit of a conversation about the society that we live in. Unfortunately, still by and large demands sta- certain state services. We have to start finding a way to privatize them until people are like, why do we even have a state again? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Like I, I got an article right here from, um, uh, Mises, from the Mises Institute. The private privatization of the subway is the solution New Yorkers need. And, and it goes on to talk about how Google and Amazon have private uh, uh, transportation platforms and tri- private transportation systems for their employees to get uh, to, to and fro. And that would – can you imagine Amazon or, or, sub, or Microsoft taking over the New York subway system? How much it would improve not only the not only the system itself but the ride, and and just everything associated with it. Yeah, have you ever been it on would a New be York wild. City? Have you ever have you ever been on a New York City subway? No, it's hell no. Le- ple- it's less than pleasant would be an understatement under most circumstances. Yeah, it now, would middle be, the middle would of the be night, a security guard in every one of them. Middle <laughs> of the night when you're drunk, stumbling home from the bars, it could be a lot of fun. Um, but on the whole, yeah, like during the day, rush hour, packed into those things like sardines, um, you know, constant construction and stuff, you know, st- lines going down and, uh, you know, when they work, it it's, sounds like hell to me. Yeah. Honestly, you're describing hell right now. Oh, uh, that's how, that's how it is here on, on our BART system. It's a uh, rush hour um, is that, just, that's, no. there's like two people in the public transit around here. When you see them, you're like, why are they still running that here? <laughs> why 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 well it's always some uh racist stuff if you were like if you were tur- going to turn off matt which is the mass area transit here if you're going to turn matt off down here like they would there would be this is discrimination this is rioting this is so no one uses it <laughs> well people do use this the 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 new york city subway dude it's it, it makes oh yeah me, you, no, don't, you, don't no the, you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to drive in the city i've done that too driving a box van in the city not fun um, but it does teach you how to be a, it does teach you how to be an extremely aggressive driver and uh, maneuver through just about anything because uh, if you can drive in New York City I think you could drive just about anywhere um. if I had a little smart car I think I could handle New York City easy but if I had my truck no, no thank you no I, well like I said I learned in a box van and I learned by by mimicking the, the taxi drivers which are the craziest motherfuckers out there but they managed to pretty much never kill anybody. And uh, they get you where you need to go as fast as <laughs> possible. So uh, it's pretty impressive. So you just fight, you just you just mirror them for a little while, and uh, you know you pick up some tricks, and uh, you learn how to dart in and out of things. So but anyway, uh, but yeah, but it, like I said, there there is a need for it in those type of places. But sure, I could absolutely to, to your original question, could you imagine? Yes, I could absolutely imagine Google or Amazon or one of these companies taking over because, well, Google and Amazon, they're essentially taking over the world at this point. Which yeah, did you hear Amazon was worth twice as much as Walmart, and they just just cash oh, bought Whole Foods. Well, they, I think they had their first. I think it was like their first, um, like money making quarters the past, go after co- the past couple Antichrist, of quarters. Because he's been, you know, they've been under Amazon as a company has been under for so very long because they they've you know they just invested everything in ideas. And uh, they just kept, kept collecting debt and collecting debt, and they're finally, uh, they're fi- finally, um, it's paying off, you know, obviously. And they're just now like him and all of his investors are just re- rolling in it because they they waited him out and they kept believing in him, and you know, eventually, look what the hell he's built out of his. He started it like like so many other projects. He started this out of his fucking basement under his garage, didn't he? He started a bookstore, an online bookstore, out of his garage, <laughs> right? Or was his basement one of the and two? And they turned it, it turned into an e- the evil capitalist overlord. I don't know what's going on with Jeff Bezos. I don't know enough to to know him, but I know that Amazon, uh, as a company, is not uh, not wholesome anymore. It is corrupt. It is not good. As, as far stopped. as what? Uh, I mean, they're the ones majorly funding a lot of the fake news in this uh, in the state or in the United well, States. He bought a new. He bought one of the biggest newspapers in the country. Yeah, he the bought Washington the Washington Post. Post and gave them six million dollars or six hundred million dollars. So no, but 
Well, or, no, he got six hundred million dollars from the CIA to give to the Washington Post. That's what it was. Jeff Bezos did. No. Well, see, that's just another reason because absent the state, these things can't really happen because the rich, <laughs> exactly. the, the, the rich but people he's, can he's only go bed. so far until they, yeah, they can only go so far until they, until they, until they fall because some a competitor comes and takes them out because there isn't a government to run to and to protect them from it. You know. And just, yeah, and and and. If you start do, like okay, if you start selling Wizzledy Dats, okay, and you're the best Wizzledy Dat seller of all time, eventually you're gonna piss off enough people that didn't either like your Wizzledy Dat or didn't like your attitude or your face or whatever that somebody's going to start making their own Wizzledy Dats that are ripoffs of yours or close to it, and then then you're gonna have a direct competitor, and that's free market capitalism right there. Uh, when when the government goes. No one can compete with this guy, and that's what Jeff Bezos is going to push it into. Uh, that's where we're at right now. I mean, this guy's got a company that's worth twice as much as Walmart. I mean, I, I think I think I read that's hard article. to swallow. Like that's hard I to just, even imagine. I think I just read an article that said something like uh, Walmart. Walmart said they're going to stop doing business with trucking with shipping companies that also do business with Amazon. Oh, this has been this is civil war for them. They finally realized that, that that it's Walmart versus Amazon, and what Walmart has done is like all of everyone that that sells stuff to Walmart, they had all of them get all of their stuff off of Amazon servers. They had all mm -hmm. of this stuff. They've gotten basically their entire infrastructure swapped off of Amazon. A lot of people, a lot of companies are now really kind of waking up to the realization that if Amazon didn't like them, their company shut down. And yep. I, I say let them good. I say let them go to war because competition is good for the consumer. My boy Jeremy or Jer Jason. Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm all for it. You know, and like I said, I just, can't wait to walk into Walmart and walk out with a truckload of stuff for a hundred dollars. I, uh, <laughs> I I I almost never hear the phrase. I can't wait to walk into Walmart. Um, that's not something you hear very no, often. No, I don't. I actually avoid Walmart with the play, uh, like the play. But. Yeah, because even even my Walmart, which is not you know, it's not like in a horrible neighborhood, but it still manages to get like that air about it, and uh, <laughs> it's still it's still um, it's funny. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> my, it's it's not as my, bad as some of those compilation videos and pictures, but you know, you see some things my, in those aisles. <laughs> my Walmart, my Walmart keeps things like makeup and deodorant under lock and key. Yeah, we are a straight ghetto. Yeah, I think the, I think some of I think a lot of a lot Walmart. more stuff is at, at this one is is under lock and key that I, you wouldn't think it would be, you know, because that started with the Home Depots, you know. I mean, spray paint has to be under lock and key because God forbid some you know some little hooligan gets out and spray paints some public property. Oh no, um, you know. Uh oh. So like, but yeah, makeup. But heck, and and yeah, I, well, I mean, here I think I think Sudafed's still under lock and key now because you know, or, yeah, or, yeah, or, or any, yeah. even even some, some some even some of the veterinary offices started put locking up even like they always had their stuff locked up, but they took like extra precautions because some people were turning, including the stuff my dog gets, uh, they were turning that into meth. <laughs> wow. Which of course is an inevitable result of the drug war, which is the state problem to begin with. So yeah, again, I really wish they would end that shit. Well, exactly. So, but again, to, to but wrap here's the problem. Here's the angle, and and I guess we could get th this. Up. This doesn't matter. But here's the angle that most people don't look at the drug war from. The CIA runs all of the drug trade, the heavy hard drugs, not the marijuana, not the you know your guy growing it out of the back of his house or whatever. They run the hardcore, like tons and tons of heroin and cocaine and XYZ, ecstasy, all this. They run that. Okay. So for this drug war is keeping their monopoly in place. So the minute the drug war goes away, the CIA is not going to have a monopoly on cocaine and heroin and all this other stuff. They're going to have to essentially enter the market. And then people would realize, holy shit. The CIA is the one selling all this stuff and getting it. No, they'll, and just, they'll just shift focus. They'll 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 know. just shift focus into something mm -hmm. even more illegal or, or exactly crazy. So, <laughs> something out the because the, the I mean you know I, I don't want to get too far into this because I I think we should get wrapping up. Soon. But most people don't look at the drug war from that perspective, and that's my main perspective because well, okay. uh, everyone always talks about the drug war and they never look at it as well. Without the drug war, how is the CIA going to fund X, Y, and Z? 
And that's the just the truth and the facts about it. Something that's How is the DEA going to get funded and all these pensions and all these reliable Democrat voters or whatnot? How are they, you know, going to be paid if there's no drug war, if there's no DEA reason? You know, that's what, how that's many what, police officers are going to be fired that are only there because they're enforcing drugs? Well, you got to think about all these back end effects that most go, people haven't thought well, about. To go, to go back to, to, to the beginning of the show, they don't. They just shift. They make up new laws to make other things <laughs> illegal. Oh, exactly. So that they don't have to get rid of them. Um, but yeah, oh, no. Yeah, they'll just they'll, they'll they'll go they'll go from enforcing drug laws to making up new environmental laws and and giving tickets to people for you know having their barbecue run too long or yep. or whatever else. Your smoke's on my lawn. I'm calling the oh. cops. I can smell it. Oh, that I'm sending recently. you a bill for making your lawn smell better. You better pay me. Yes. Yeah. So. McNukes incoming. <laughs> <laughs> recreational McNukes all around, please. Uh, On that note, though, we should probably get wrapping up. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, wrapping up. That sounds <laughs> great. Yeah. So, but Jason, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for uh, stopping by in a pinch tonight. It was uh, good to, you know, when Dave wasn't ranting. That was literally and, last minute. I appreciate that. Talking well. over <laughs> both of us. Uh, it was good. It was good. It's good to have you on. So, <laughs> thanks for coming by. All right. No. Uh, th thanks for inviting me. Uh, and as I told you guys before, I owe you guys a lot. And uh, anytime you guys need me, just let me know. All right. Well, I have find that hard to believe, but okay. <laughs> um all right well uh and, and uh, allegedly our site will finally be back up soon uh date we have worked out a deal with at the our, new link of solpodcast.org yes solpodcast.org is the new website and our friend our friend paul gordon who i just got the chance to meet uh to actually to go back uh, and and finish up that story from the beginning of the show uh you know, I, I, I did get to meet a lot of cool people. Uh, you know, I saw some people that were here. And there's actually a, a lot of guests. A lot of former guests of ours were there. Um, you know, Shane Buell, who we've had on a bunch of times, was there. Uh, James Weeks, of course, was there. Uh, Lou Fien, um, Shane Jeffrey Tucker. Shane Radliff. Jeffrey Tucker, who I got to talk to uh, one morning as I stumbled out of my out of my tent. I told you he's interesting, isn't he? Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, okay. Wore, wore the suit the entire time in the woods. Um, and I stumbled out of my tent one morning to find Jeffrey standing at our campsite and was he was lost and he was asking directions. So I walked up and talked to him. Um, and it was, that was pretty funny. Um, Sterling, Sterling Lujan, um, who I actually got to hang out with a little bit there. Uh, uh, Mandy, Mandy Silver, who we had way back on that way back then. And, and her, her Mandy's mom, Teresa, who is one of our biggest fans. She has, oh, oh, Teresa, I love Teresa, Teresa Prince. is fantastic. Yes. I got to meet and hang out with Teresa. That was really, Really exciting because she has been one of our greatest supporters ever since Mandy was on the show way back in like you know somewhere in the twenties or thirties whenever we had her or maybe <laughs> yeah, like earlier than really that. Early. Yeah, like almost a hundred episodes ago, uh, her mom started following our show and hasn't stopped. And she became a very big fan of Danilo's and, and and of ours in general. And she still follows Danilo's work and she still follows ours. And it was, it was really cool. It was really cool to meet her. Um, so. Uh, and I also met a couple, you know, I met other people that I, I think I, we should hopefully finally be able to get on the show soon. Um, like, oh, uh, uh, Adam Williams. Uh, I got to talk to him and because uh, he yeah, flew in from the Netherlands. Guy. And Ben Stone. Ben Stone was there. Ben at, Stone. Uh, two, God, I'm, so, I'm still so like? jealous. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I did not get to hang out with Ben as much as I had wanted Didn't wanted get a beard to. Smell in. Okay, um, right. I, I, yeah, I, 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 you know, I got to hang out with him and his 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 lovely wife Cindy for a, a couple of times for you know short little burst while we were standing there. But my kids were usually around and running and screaming and asking me for to, to do stuff, and uh, and I I missed them. They came by. They stopped by to say goodbye when they were leaving on Sunday morning. But I was in, on the other side of the campsite. and We didn't cross paths again. Uh, but it was very exciting. Um, I think I, I think I told this, this story on the fiends the other night, but I almost forgot to stop my car because yeah, you, we, that's what that's what you said on yeah, that, I said it on your you, show too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were. Um, we we I, I we finally got to finally got to the campsite after like I, like I started the story earlier. Uh, we drove to Ohio, stayed overnight, um, and then drove the next the rest of the, the other four hours the next morning. And when we got there, I went and checked in, and I was driving through the campground and and going through going heading towards the apple orchard where I knew where I had an idea where I wanted to set up camp. And I see this older you know little old you know slightly older couple than me walking through the orchard. And as soon as they come out from under the trees, I see this very long beard. 
and I see a kill the precedent shirt like mine. And immediately I just yelled out, Hey, I think I'm supposed to know you. And he recognized my voice and he said, Jeremy. And I heard like it was Ben. And I was like, Oh my God. And like I, I yelled to my kids, Daddy, you'll be right back. And I almost forgot to put the car in park as I was trying to dive out of the vehicle to go give this man a hug. <laughs> um, like I jumped out and I realized the car was still moving. I was like, Crap. And I jumped back in and like put the car up. I'm like, Girls, I'll be right back. And like I ran at him and gave him a huge hug because, you know, as I've said plenty of times before, Ben has had a huge influence on me. Uh, and I've, oh, yeah. I've talked to, you know, we've had him on the show a couple of times. Uh, I've got to talk to him. Uh, him and I uh, talk through Telegram somewhat regularly. Uh, and I get, to, you know, and I've had plenty of conversations with him. But actually getting to meet him finally was just a huge thrill for me. Uh, so that was that was really, really cool. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, but it, well, I'm it, glad but, you got to meet him. I, yeah, I, I did to meet him one day. It was it was very cool. And uh, but like I said, it just overall the fact that there was all these like former guests of ours, and I'm sure I think I'm actually probably forgetting a couple of people. Um, oh well, yeah, Joe, well the, the two Joes from <laughs> from the MPLC, Joe Joe Allen <laughs> or Joe Cushing and uh, Joe Mutard, who we just had on recently, were obviously there. And uh, you know, that was a good Danny time. Javier was there. Dot Dan, Bl- Blodgett. Yeah, Danny was there. And uh, him and I actually talked a lot because, uh, well, both of us now know what it's like to be ostracized and um, <laughs> totally and doxxed and have our lives threatened over something we did on the internet. Um, so Danny and I commiserated oh quite a bit. And by the and Danny makes a spectacular um, ghost pepper chocolate that uh <laughs> that i have really? now had both years in a row and it, what this there's another guy dustin i forget his last name and i apologize if he listens to this dustin i just i met him th- I, met, I met him this weekend um who makes this killer um hot sauce that danny actually uses to, to put inside of this chocolate but it's uh yeah he makes chocolate but it's loaded with uh, ghost pepper hot sauce mm. and it is fucking amazing <laughs> uh but yeah so yeah i highly encourage well, I'm anybody glad you had fun down there man it sounds like it was a blast i had a blast like i said it was different because i was with my kids but it was it was it was better because i got to hang out with them for you know four or five like five days four nights in the woods we got to spend all this time together they got to make a whole bunch of new friends uh you know we spent one whole day at the lake together and uh they got they the most important thing to me is they got to experience the lifestyle and like the principles of what we talk about, what they hear me talking about all the time, what I'm trying to impart on them. They got to see it in, in person. They got to see the way we all hung out together, helped one another, you know, so, you know, people were selling, you know, people had, people were selling food, people were selling their, you know, clothes, clothes, whatever they made, you know, all their different products and stuff like that. Um, just people, you know, peacefully interacting and, getting along and you know there was no fights or anything like that you know anything any anytime people get heated things are calm down pretty quickly because you know nobody wants to disturb the tribe <laughs> type of deal and uh it was really it was it was really great so i highly encourage anybody who didn't make it out this year to definitely uh make sure they're there that next year um from what i've heard it may have to change venues unfortunately apparently uh for, somebody said, I, I don't know if this is actually true, but somebody said that the camp owners may actually be communists, and they, but they, they're like the state communist kinds, and they didn't take too kindly to the fact that there was a couple of speeches, one of them on I, how to build your own IEDs, um, and then another one about um, p- police brutality, and I think it might have been kind of like, you know, when, are you, when, when can you shoot a cop type things. Um, oh. The fact that it grew a little bit this year, and there was um, more headlining speakers, um, tells me that the MPLC will make sure it goes on next year, regardless of whether they have to change venues or not. Uh, so there, there will definitely be a fest next year, and I can't wait. So I highly encourage people to uh, make sure they get out to that, or or any, or a lot of these other events too. So. Any hoodle. Um, but like I started to say before, uh, we're going to have a website up hopefully soon. Thanks uh, thanks to our friend Paul Gordon. Uh, that should hopefully be up. And uh, we will finally get all this sorted out. So all of our information will soon again we be able to be found. At, out. Yeah, well, that, that's a whole other story. But all of, our, all of our information will soon again be able to be found now at solpodcast.org. Uh, our Patreon page is still up, obviously. And please consider donating. I actually just put out a Patreon episode yesterday. And there will be another one coming soon. Uh, I already have it in the can. I just got to uh, chop off the ends and uh, make sure there's no incriminating evidence. I don't want getting out, and <laughs> and uh, that will yeah, probably, please do. Yeah, that will probably be posted in the next week or so. So, uh, all right. 
So this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com.